Hey everybody, sorry about no video last week, you know, life happened, but you didn't miss much from what I've heard. The Smurfs movie was, well, the Smurfs movie, except not as bad as the last two, so there was a little bit of endorsement behind that. And The Case for Christ, the new Pure Flix movie, yeah, it's Pure Flix, you do what you can. But on to the main attraction, The Fate of the Furious. It is basically the Fast and the Furious 8, but they tried to be uh, profound with this one, I'm guessing. And it's kind of noticeable throughout the entire movie. Well, at least from our villain's aspect. But I guess I should give my basic synopsis of the whole Fast and the Furious franchise. I can remember when the first one came out. My exact words, there is no way this is going to last, this looks like complete garbage, and why are you possibly taking this seriously in the slightest? And as time has gone on, they've embraced the humor, the zany, and the over-the-top. And all the better for it. Because otherwise, this would be very tough to watch. And if you even remotely try to think while this is going on, good luck with that. But if you can turn your brain off and enjoy this movie, it actually can be enjoyable. I wouldn't call it good, because... Whoever thought this movie needed over-the-top shaky cam? And it got better as the movie went on, but during the prison scene, if you've seen the trailers, you know what I'm talking about, I could barely make out what was going on, and I was getting actually some motion sickness from the fight. It looked cool when they held it still for a second, but they didn't do that that often. But yes, as you could probably guess, this one's all about family and uh, how important it is and how far you'd be willing to go for it. And fans of the franchise will get a lot out of this movie. Granted, I've only seen these movies basically once each, and I don't think I'm going to rewatch this one again, but there's a lot of, uh, I guess you could call it callback stuff, a lot of reoccurring characters, and for those of you curious about um, Paul Walker's character, if I remember correctly, Brian. Uh, they do address him in the movie, and they specifically say they're not going to talk about him, they're not going to drag him into this. It's basically they're letting him go and not bringing him back. Which, you know, considering Paul Walker is gone, it would be very in poor taste to uh, get someone new to play him. One could almost say the same for Hugh Jackman and Wolverine, but that's a topic for another day. But, yeah, this... This movie's got character, it's got class. I, I chuckled a couple of times in this movie, and the fight scenes when they would actually hold still and let you see it were really good. And it's always nice to see uh, Jason Statham be an egotistical Brit kicking people's butts eight ways to Sunday, and The Rock basically being the human Hulk. Seriously, if they were to redo the, uh, the Hulk series, I guarantee you that he would be uh, the Hulk. Just spray paint the dude green and make him talk for whatever reason, because The Rock is actually funny. Yeah, he's actually had a good comeback to him, and I'm, I'm happy to see it. But as for this movie, the biggest gripes you can really say about this is, it is two and a half hours, and you feel it. They do not know when to end a scene. And what I mean by scene, I mean the action scenes. The human sets that they build up are good. They go in, they serve a purpose, and they move on. But the fight scenes or the action or the car races just go on and on. It's cool at first, don't get me wrong, but you can't always have it hyped up to 11 the entire time because then you don't feel it, you just feel exhausted. Like I need to take a break, and not a fun way, but just like, come on, give me a second, give me something new to work with. And our villain, or villainess, if I'm being so nice as to say, is basically your average high, s nope, I'm sorry, your average college student, if they took maybe hmm, one, maybe two philosophy or psychology classes and now think they know how the human brain works and how the world works and we all should be held accountable for our actions and how we're truly not really making emotions, but she has emotions, but says she doesn't and that she's above it and that it's fate, but then she goes into a whole spiel about choice, which defies fate, and then it's just, oh my god. In a movie where you gotta turn your brain off, 
it's kind of clear why they said it that way, because when they try to be smart, they're not good at it. Now, setting up plot and some nice twists, they got a decent bit of that going. But just when they try to pretend to be smart, it's just like, shut up. One, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. Two, you really sound pretentious doing this. And three, we're not here to see this. Granted, I'm here because I like seeing movies and doing these little videos, but the average person going to see The Fate of the Furious or any Fast of the Furious movie is there for the following reasons. Cars, fighting, explosions. Basically what you would get from a Michael Bay film, except this is actually good. And yes, I know he's done good stuff, but I'm referring to the Transformers movies. And oh boy, that new trailer still looks horrible. And I'm not looking forward to that one either. Really hoping something comes out during that weekend so I can make it a pass, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, but yeah, The Fate of the Furious. Go see it if you're a fan of the original stuff. If you've enjoyed it up to this point, go get your money's worth. But if you found this stuff pointless, over the top, and you just can't get into it, don't go see this. So, if you're a fan, yay! If you're not a fan, stay away. Anyway, so like I said, guys, I really feel bad about, uh, you know, missing out last week. So I, uh, I found a little movie, uh, DC's newest animated, Teen Titans The Judas Contract. So, I think I'll give that one a watch, and uh, you can look forward to that video tomorrow, hopefully. Well, what will I review next week? I don't know. I haven't checked the docket yet, but I'm assuming there's something good to come out. So, until then, this is Kevin Riley signing off, and have a good night.